Welcome back to Holy Sisterhood, the podcast. I am Brooklyn, and I am so glad you're joining us today. Also joining us is my friend, Joy. Thanks for coming on, Joy. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Of course. I have reasons that I wanted you on this episode, but Boy. first, <laughs> I know I didn't tell you, but um, first things first, will you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, my name is Joy. I am a mom of three teenagers. Fun um, stuff. Fun stuff. My husband <laughs> and I will be celebrating our 21st anniversary in September. We um, have lived in Gillette for all of our marriage. I've lived here for all of my life. I did not know that. Yeah. Other than college, I went to college in South Dakota and I'm a first grade teacher. And yeah. Yeah. And that's about it. One thing that I, I thought you used to or you've taught, I guess, at a bunch of events that we've had mm -hmm. here at the church and I've been to other ones that you've spoke at. Um, I feel like you're so good at speaking to women oh, and thank you. <laughs> and we've like been in a group setting together. Um, and I would call you a feeler, but mm -hmm. I also am on the other end of that where I was like a non feeler. So I always admired the way that you could allow yourself. And I don't know if you felt like this, but allow yourself to like have emotion, especially mm -hmm. during prayer mm -hmm. or, um, yeah, like teaching, things like that. I feel like you let yourself, well, cry even. Yeah. <laughs> and that is vulnerable for me. Like yeah. that's hard. That was really hard for me to do. So yeah. I always admired that. Well, and thanks. We're talking about feelings. So I was like, you know about feelings, Joy. <laughs> Joy is an emotional train wreck. <laughs> no, <laughs> I didn't. No. Do you think that you're a feeler? Like, would you call yourself that? I, I would now. Yeah. Like... Um, it's interesting that that is how people perceive me. And have you and been when told I, that by others? Yes. Okay. And, and when I stop to reflect on it, it makes sense to me, but, um, I wouldn't ever have called myself that like until probably in the last maybe five years. So I think that I, um, it's confusing for me sometimes because I don't necessarily always feel that I'm in that in touch with my own emotions. Yeah. They almost surprise me sometimes, if that makes sense. But I'm very perceptive of other people's emotions. And I think okay. that a lot of times um, maybe that's what comes out when I'm when I'm teaching or when I'm praying, because you know, God is not devoid of emotion. Right. So I think that for whatever reason, um, I can kind of be perceptive to the feelings of like the Holy Spirit in me. Yeah. You know what That's I what mean? That's what I was going to ask you. It do you think weird, it's the Holy Spirit? I do. I really do. Yeah. And I think as I've become more in touch with just listening to the Spirit and walking by the Spirit and you know, when I pray, trying to be like, I want to pray what the Holy Spirit wants me to pray. Mm -hmm. And then it seems like a lot of times that emotion will sort of just sneak up on me out of nowhere because I'm not, I don't, I don't know. It's weird. Like I'll watch a movie where every woman around me would be bawling and I'll just be like, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> okay, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm not like a big laugher at funny yeah. things so it's it's just interesting but it's cool though it's yeah. almost like a gift though from the holy spirit mm -hmm. and you would say it's more like compassion to others or like yeah because yeah definitely um i think i mean you and you've seen this and when i'm when i've had this experience where it's just like I feel like I can really put myself in someone else's shoes yeah. and kind of feel their feelings in a way. And I don't, I don't know that. I mean, that has to be God. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Helping. I'm just listening. Cause yeah. I admire, like I said, I admire it. It inspires me. I want mm -hmm. to feel like that, but yeah. I'm just thinking about how Jesus feels that compassion for us. Mm -hmm. And so when you're praying and you're like, I want to pray what, what you want me to pray and you feel yeah. those feelings, it's like, this is how my heart is. This is how Jesus's heart is toward this situation. Yeah. 
And I love that. It's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So before, so, okay, back up. Mm -hmm. Did it take practice to like learn how to do that or did it just happen one day? Oh, that's a good question. You know, and also I'm straying off of what I, was I said like, I was going to This wasn't ask you. on the notes. <laughs> um, yeah. Man, you know, when I, so I worked at my church um, for like four years ish. Mm -hmm. And when I was working there, um, most of the things that I had to do were so far outside of my realm of where I was like, I got this, I can do this in my own strength. Mm -hmm. um, like, so I just really learned how much I need to lean on God, right? To be kind of on that cutting edge where I'm outside of my comfort zone. And I'm like, yes, Lord, I want to obey you. I want to follow you. I want to do what you asked me to do. But good golly, I cannot do this by myself. Mm -hmm. And and so praying and just um, asking God for help. And I had so many experiences during that phase of time where I'd be like, say, for example, I was working on a teaching uh, for a Sunday morning. I would be usually late at night mm -hmm. toiling, just toiling over this because nothing ever came easy to me. Yeah. And I would just be begging God, like, I don't want to do this in my own strength. I can't. Like, I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the wisdom. I don't have anything that I need. This is this is all you. And there were so many times where God would just meet with me in that place. And um, I would have a lot of emotion as I studied the word and, and just really dug in. And it was like he would just show me his heart, you know, yeah. in the passages that I was studying. And I think I just fell in love with the emotions that God feels, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, I think that that was really kind of where a lot of that started. Yeah. For me was just not necessarily that I'm like, um, I always have to have an emotional experience with right. God or I have to feel emotions, but it's just like, I don't, I don't only just want to connect to him just intellectually. Right. Right. Like, mm -hmm. God, I want to feel your heart and I want people who come into contact with me to feel your, feel your heart through me and feel, not, know that you're not like a cold, distant, disconnected, unfeeling God. Like I want people to know that you feel. Yeah. Um, and yeah. That's so good. And I think they I actually know that people do feel his heart when they come into contact with you. And I think that's why I was really inspired because I am somebody that is very logical. Mm -hmm. And so moving from head knowledge to heart knowledge is really challenging for me. Yeah. And also very scary for me. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it ever felt scary to you, but for some reason, um, not so much anymore, but like, a few years ago, if I were to pray in front of people, first of all, praying in front of people can be scary, mm -hmm. but then you're going to cry too and be vulnerable. You know, yeah. all of that is intimidating. Yeah. And so I love that you feel the heart of God and share the heart of God. Yeah. Do you, when you were younger, did you, um, did you always welcome emotion or did you push it away? Like your own emotion? You know, um, I definitely pushed it away and I, I kind of, um, grew up in a pretty, there was a rough phase in my childhood where mm -hmm. there was a lot of dysfunction in my home. And, um, I just kind of learned pretty early on to watch other people mm -hmm. and to learn their how they were doing emotionally. I was just really like always quietly observing <laughs> my parents and yeah. my siblings and my teachers and everybody and just kind of trying to figure out how they were feeling so that I could hone my actions or reactions so that I wouldn't rock any boats. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> 
a lot of that involved me feeling like I needed to kind of suppress my emotions and for the sake of others. Yeah. Or, and it's not like anybody ever told me that it's just something, you know, kids are really interesting at doing Mm -hmm. things like this where they will just watch the world and decide this is how I need to interact with the world. Mm -hmm. And I think I just kind of somehow internalized that there wasn't, there was too much going on emotionally in my home. I needed to just make myself small. Yeah. And so I could hide, have my emotions on the inside, but I couldn't let them out because I didn't want it to be a burden Mm -hmm. in my family, you know, Mm -hmm. to be one more thing in the mix. Yeah. um, Especially for my mom. So yeah, it's it's interesting to see how um, God has redeemed that in a sense. Although I don't think that I'm still very emotionally. <laughs> I don't often display emotions just in my normal yeah day to day life, and especially as a teacher, you know, you're constantly like a student does something that you're like, <sighs> you can't. You can't yell. <laughs> that bothers me, you know. Yeah. So you really have to learn how to keep yourself in check and kind of right. have this really good poker face. But mm-hmm. yeah. So I also um, reacted similarly and and study people around me. I'm wondering if that's why you're so or like if that helps you be in tune with others' emotions, though. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that so it's an attachment style. It's called vacillating. I you might yes. know about that. Yeah. Yes. Oh yes. So I yeah, do. you're always checking everybody's mm-hmm. temperature to see how they're feeling. Yeah. But then as you got older, God kind of just redeemed that part, and you yeah were healthier. Yeah. Right. I mean. <laughs> It's it's a work in progress. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be Which real. Which it will be forever, here. right? It will be. Till we are in heaven. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And I and I think that's something I have to really just be mindful of is like I'm so much farther than I was yeah. in my journey. But do I have it all figured out emotionally? Not even. Yeah. And um that assessment where you learn your attachment style, mm-hmm. I was one of the people where you get the email where they're like, this is so sad, (laughs) but I was almost tied in pleaser and avoider. Mm -hmm. And then I also was high in vacillating a little bit lower. And they send you an email if you're high in several areas, like, we're really sorry. You must have had a very traumatic childhood, you, basically based on your profile <laughs> that you're They're super. Like, Please seek help. <laughs> you're high in several things. Yes, I. I mean, it was several years ago, but I just was like, yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, I was high in vacillator and pleaser, yeah. but I didn't get that. <laughs> you didn't get the email. I think you have to be high in, in three. three. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot, I missed. I missed the mark. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I um found this quote by Jenny Allen Mm -hmm. in the book, Untangle Your Emotions. And it is kind of goes along with that and like how we learn all of us throughout our childhood, teenage years, and even into adulthood, how to like handle or cope with emotion. Mm -hmm. So it says, we learned that strong emotions are uncomfortable and we shouldn't inflict them on others. We should smooth down their rough edges or better yet, make them disappear. These and other equally confusing messages were conveyed to us and we believed them. We swallowed them whole. And so began our lifelong practice of denying ourselves permission to feel what we felt. Denying ourselves the truth of our humanity as beings created in the image of God. The God who feels all these feelings and created us to feel them as well. Mm -hmm. So that last line, like the God who feels all of these feelings and created us to feel them as well. Yeah. Do you believe that? Like, do you? So, I mean, obviously from what you've said, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, But that God has emotions. Yeah. And I feel like, though, that's not really super widely talked about Mm -hmm. um, within the church. Not that, like, not to be negative or anything, but I feel like it was it was misconstrued or I myself misconstrued it to think that emotions were bad Mm -hmm. and like that God didn't want me to have them Mm. I don't know if you ever felt that way but um I struggled and again it's probably my own personal perception but I was like God doesn't want me to feel because Mm. they 
these things distract me. And absolutely, they can be Mm -hmm. sinful, but emotions themselves are not sin. Correct. Um, So do you, so I guess my question is, mm-hmm. have you ever felt like within like the big church that mm-hmm. there's been some confusion on emotion? Does that make sense? Sorry. Yeah. I took a long road. No, there. I, I, <laughs> I do think that. And I was thinking about that a lot, you know, as I read through these questions. Um, I just think that where the confusion has come in for a lot of people is we haven't clearly delineated the difference between feeling your feelings and mm-hmm. being mindful of your feelings or emotions versus doing them. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's been too enmeshed together where we haven't done a good job telling people like it's, it's not a sin to be sad or disappointed or brokenhearted or whatever, even though it says in the Bible, like, be angry and do not sin, for yeah, example. Right. Like that where what else could more clearly state? Like feel your feeling, just don't, don't do, that. do your feeling. <laughs> so good. But I th- I think what gets confusing is church has become such a thing. And I hope this doesn't sound critical, but um I think because we we all just gather together in this big setting and if you don't ever get plugged into like a small community outside of the Sunday gathering it doesn't feel like a place necessarily where your your emotions or your feelings if they are strong if they are big like they're necessarily welcome right right because mm-hmm. we've got like our program that we need to stick to and it feels very, um, I don't know. So when I was a kid, I'll never forget this. Um, I was like a teenager, maybe 14 or 15. There was a lady who was up, there was like an altar call or call and she was kneeling up at the front of the church, just weeping, mm. weeping. And, and I remember just watching that thinking like, Oh my gosh, what is wrong with her? You know, why is she so upset? Slash this is so awkward, you know, like, why is she doing that? Like it was making me so uncomfortable. And, and I, and then the next Sunday she was back again, weeping at the, at the front of the church after church. And I just was like, oh my goodness, this woman needs to get it together. (laughs) Of course. It's so wrong. Now that I'm an adult and I've raised three kids, you know, and I've been married for a long time, I'm like, oh, I know exactly why that lady was crying. Yeah. Life is hard. But I just feel like sometimes it feels like we just, we package ourselves into our neat, tidy little, I'm fine. I'm Mm -hmm. fine. How are you? I'm fine. And we feel like, I, if I tell somebody, if someone comes up to me and does the church greeting and says, how are you? If I say how I really am, that's going to be uncomfortable for them. Right. They're not going to know how to handle it. So I don't want to be vulnerable and real. And I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to that. I mean, I think definitely like the smaller groups, the communities where you meet and you kind of can become more like a family in a sense and do life together and you have a smaller opportunity for those things but um yeah I agree with you I definitely think there's value in getting plugged in outside Mm -hmm. of a Sunday gathering Mm because I mean even if there's like 50 people within your church that's a lot um to hear how everyone is truly doing right yeah so it is important but also this last Sunday somebody came up to me and started weeping Mm -hmm. that I didn't know this person. And um, it didn't make me uncomfortable, but it would have like two years ago. Uh, But I just hugged her and I was so thankful that she like felt like she could do that at our church because Jesus does want us to bring it to him and he does want us to help care for each other. Yes. Um, And I also think it's probably partly just Western culture. Oh yeah. Cause you think about crying anywhere and it yeah. is, it would be uncomfortable, right? right. Like in front of people. Yeah. <laughs> you need to go into your house, into your room and shut your door. Hide. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hide, hide your feelings. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I think that the other side of that too is like, um, I don't, I don't know. This could just be me. Okay. So take it with that. But I always felt like with negative emotions, like I would have this voice inside my head. So say like somebody says something that really offends me. And my first reaction is I'm mad. My very next thought would be something like, you should know better. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be mad. Like yes. shooting on myself about my negative emotions. Like yeah. if you are going to be like Jesus, um, you, sh you should just immediately suppress all those negative mad, bad, sad, whatever they are. And, and that's so, that's so bad. Like yeah. that's not, that's not accurate at all. And I don't know where that came from for me, but it's been so helpful for me to just learn, like it, it's normal, you know, if something bad happens to you to feel sad and disappointed and, and to lament that, like, it's okay to feel that way. It's what are you going to do with those feelings? Right. You don't you know? have to act on them. Yeah. So what's cool about reading Untangle Your Emotions by Jenny mm -hmm. Allen is she did write a book a few years ago, um, Get Out of Your Head, I mm -hmm. think is what it was, which that one was completely logical and like yeah. control your thoughts. And she probably would have even said like, yeah, you're in control of your thoughts yeah. and push it away. But so then yeah. she comes back and writes this book and she says, um, it's not one or the other. Mm -hmm. It's both together. Like, yes, we do have control of our thoughts. We should yes. think what is true and worthy, but also we can feel yeah. and that's okay. And they can both happen together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, she said, um, God is waiting for us to come to him with all of it. Even mm -hmm. the ugly feelings you and I are tempted to judge. God is waiting to see if we'll let them draw us back to him. So even the ugly feelings that you and I are tempted to judge, that's completely what you do after you have those thoughts. That's what I do. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of women do that. Even like definitely I'm sure throughout teaching because parenting or being married or even being in friendships. I mean, mm -hmm. we're all messy people. So of yeah. course we're yes. going to feel anger at each other or disappointment or sadness. Yeah. But it's not healthy to suppress it and be like, oh, don't feel that. Don't feel that. Yeah. Yeah. Because suppressed emotions, I, I put it in here I know. Somewhere. I was going to tell you that you had a really great quote about yeah. that. Yeah. So um, I haven't actually finished this book, but I've been reading it this summer. It's called The Body Revelation. It's by Elisa Keith. I've heard good She's, things about it. It's amazing. It's, it's really good. But she basically talks about how when you suppress suppress, suppress your emotions. Um, it's really, really bad for you. I'm trying to like find physically too. Yes. Um, well, this is, was a quote. She quoted this in her book. This was a quote from a psychology today article, but it said, you will never resolve underlying issues. If you deny and run from your feelings, suppressed emotions, don't just go away. They instead, they become toxic. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I think I've experienced that in my own life where I've just had certain things like come up where I'm like, I wonder if this is because of all of the things that I've just suppressed for sure <laughs> for so many years, Yeah, you know, like it's not healthy. So my new, my new inner dialogue with myself all the time is like, it's okay. You know, just feel your feelings, notice them, don't judge mm -hmm. them. Yeah, and which then, is so hard. Yes. It uh, takes time to learn to yes, not judge yourself. For, for real. <laughs> but then like run it to the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, like why why do we think that we need to judge ourselves for feeling feelings? Yeah. When he when he has paid the price. Right. For all of it. And he doesn't judge us, you know. Yeah. No, so. I agree with you. And I mean, when he clearly felt feelings, anger is mm -hmm. the hardest feeling for me to feel. Yeah. Um, I'm actually very bad at even noticing anger. I'm getting better at it. Yeah. Um, I, my husband even, I think I've said like, I'm mad at you maybe like twice in our marriage. Because wow. <laughs> I don't. Lucky guy. <laughs> no, it's, it's like not. He would disagree because I'll be like, I am so frustrated or like. Or I'll just be passive aggressive. I'm getting better. The two yeah. times I've probably been in this like last year. It's like. 
that made me feel angry. Yeah. <laughs> and that's so hard for me to say, but he actually receives it so well. He's like, thank you like yeah. for telling me that instead yeah. of just acting mad and not saying anything. Yeah. yeah. But God felt anger too. And Jesus like yeah. it shows it in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Um. So were you ever taught I think you might have already said this but you were never taught like by someone to feel emotions in a healthy way within the will of God like you don't think you can't remember a time that you were like taught it I don't think so yeah I, but I I was praying like I want to tell the truth so I'm like God if there is anybody who taught me that and I don't remember please remind me because <laughs> I don't want to be like, no, nobody ever taught me that. But I'm like, I can't really pinpoint anything in particular yeah. or anyone in particular. But even it, I was, I explained in the podcast that I recorded for last week, um, I felt like, and you kind of said this, but I felt like God kind of taught me mm -hmm. um, how to feel a little bit. Yeah. Um, because there was this time, I call it my counseling session with God. Mm -hmm. Well, it was actually months. Um, but he just would repeatedly bring back things that I had suppressed. And I would, and at first was like, no, 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 I don't want to. Yeah. But then over time, I allowed myself to sit in them. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to like share how I felt with him yeah. and allow his comfort in. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if it's like the same for you through your prayers while you were studying the word, things yeah. like that. But it's almost like he taught me mm -hmm. how to submit it to his will. Yeah. Um, which is special. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. And I mean, you know, the Holy Spirit is a teacher, yeah. you know, yeah. and he he's a comforter. He's a teacher. And I think when you're yielded to when you're like, God, I want to walk in step with the Holy Spirit. I want to do your will. Yeah. I think part of that process is um, the Holy Spirit teaching you those those things. And I've just seen in my own life how I'll recognize a need in my life. Like, for example, I need to become more emotionally healthy. Mm -hmm. And if I start praying and looking for resources and knowledge and things towards that end, it's like he is so faithful, you know, to bring those things and yeah um yeah so yeah I do think a lot of it is the Holy Spirit I think I put on here too when I was thinking about all these last night one thing with me was when I, when I became a mom right your kids are first just these teeny tiny little sweet little squishies and they just never can do anything wrong and you love them so much and then they get to be around two <laughs> and they start to know becomes their favorite word right and then they get a little older and you start to really see like, oh, sinful nature is real. Mm -hmm. Like, I will never doubt that this is true. Yeah. <laughs> because nobody teaches your kids to yeah. sin, to disobey. Like they just start doing it. And I remember being so um, surprised by how quickly my kids could make me feel very angry mm -hmm. and just like upset like really bad and and I hated that like it scared me like I didn't want to feel like that and so that was kind of one thing for me that I was like hmm <laughs> something is off lord <laughs> yeah why, what is this like I don't feel like I should be getting this angry you know because my child squeezed the entire tube of toothpaste out on the floor right. or whatever like it's frustrating yes but it's not something that should just Ruin really just wreck me. Yeah. And, and so just kind of pursuing that, I think, kind of led me on a journey of starting to think, OK, like maybe I need to become more emotionally healthy. And but also as your kids get older and you really realize like, whoa, these people are really watching me mm -hmm. and they really are going to want to do life the way I do life until they become teenagers and, and then they, they want to be upset. nothing like you <laughs> but um I need to I need to grow in this I need to mature in this so that I can be a good role model for my children to watch and again do I have this completely right no I still 
my kids, if you ever get to sit down with my teenagers, one of their favorite hobbies is roasting me. So (laughs) they've got a handful of stories of times when I just completely lost my mommy marbles, Mm -hmm. you know, and they'll, they just love to tell people those stories because they get good laughs Mm -hmm. and, (laughs) and they turn me bright red because I'm so ashamed. Teenagers are unfair. (laughs) Yeah, they are. They are unfair, but they also keep us so humble because if I ever were to try to sit down here and be like, oh, I've got it all figured out, you know, it would like, I would come on here and like comment. No, she doesn't. (laughs) Yes. Or I'd be like, some, some of these people know my teenagers and all they have to do is be like, is that really true? <laughs> I'd be like, no. Okay. Two thoughts. Yeah. One is I completely resonate with mm-hmm. parenting. Um, it's definitely God uses it to sanctify you because yes. it does bring up so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and you do want to be better for these little yeah. humans and steward them well. Yeah. So I agree. And I feel like that is where I noticed too. Yeah. Where Because when you yell at them and you're like, wow, that was really not worth it. Um, right. Yeah. That anger is obviously from something else. Yes. I need to go backwards. But then, so how did you, um, bec- how, what steps did you take after that to become emotionally healthy? Like, so for me, I went to counseling. Mm-hmm. I read books on it, obviously, and um, study it, but yeah. look, and pray and look yeah. to the word to the word. So what kind of things did you do or do you do? Um, I, I definitely am a big fan of reading books, Mm -hmm. listening to lots of podcasts. Um, and then I think the biggest thing though, is just allowing myself to be vulnerable Mm -hmm. with other people. Mm -hmm. And like that has been the biggest and hardest step for me because Especially when you've been, I mean, I've known Jesus since I was five. Mm -hmm. I grew up in church. So my inner dialogue is like, you should, you should have this all figured out by now. And it's embarrassing for you to have to tell somebody like, I exploded on my teenagers the other day and was chasing one of them around the house, trying to catch them to tackle them down and give them a spanking or whatever. I don't Mm know. Um, so just having people that I, that I know love Jesus too, and they want me to be more like Jesus and being able to be vulnerable with them and say, hey, I, I struggle with this. Mm-hmm. What, you know, like I want to become more, more emotionally healthy. What do you see in me? Um, because people can see your blind spots often. And if there are people that you trust who no, you know that they don't want to hurt you. They want to help you grow in your Christ likeness. I think you can feel safe to ask that question and and trust their answers. You know, yeah. and and it's been hard for me to build a community like that around me, but I think it's essential. Like I think we need to be able to be vulnerable with people. And you know, you were you were in a text group that I texted this weekend. I was struggling with some emotions around an event that recently happened in my life. And I I've been laughing about coming on this podcast about emotions because I'm like, I've been an emotional train wreck for <laughs> five days now. Um, but I I knew I was like, because after I had wrestled and wrestled with this, and I'm praying and you know, I'm asking God and I'm remembering all the scriptures that I know. I still just feel like I'm just hitting a wall. And it, it's like, you need to reach out to your people and be bring like, I'm, light. I'm struggling with this. Yes, bring it into the light. Like, and and let people pray for you and encourage you. And and that helps, mm-hmm. you know, it really does. Yeah. Um, so I think vulnerability is huge, but also just being obedient to the Holy Spirit. I think that... Um, you know, if he tells you something that you need to do or stop doing and and you ignore him, then at least this is the way it happens for me. I kind of will stop hearing from him. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, be obedient to the promptings of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. where it's like, um, he can teach you, he can help you, but you have to actually like do Mm -hmm. do the things do what you read in the word and 
take some positive steps. So, but one book in particular that really was kind of a eye opener for me and helped me was it's called Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. Have you heard of it? No. It's by Pete Scazzaro. And um, I listened to it a few summers ago after probably several years of my pastor telling me I should listen to it. And I was like, I don't want to, or you should read it. And, but I finally listened to it and he's really a fun listen. Cause he has, he's from New York. So he has like a New York accident <laughs> yeah. accent. I'm all about an accent. So yeah. it, it's such a good book. It really, it was an eye opener for me. It really helped me realize like, he basically says like, you cannot be spiritually mature if you refuse to become emotionally mature mm-hmm. and I'm butchering that, but it's literally, it's right. like right on the bottom. It's like the subtitle of the book. <laughs> I don't have it exactly right, yeah. but it's so true. Like you, you need know? both. Yeah. Because God, I feel like speaks to us so much through emotion. Mm-hmm. And if you're emotionally unhealthy and you can't bring your emotions to him, which that is vulnerability too. Like yes. bringing emotions to God and to others. Mm-hmm. It's, it's hard. That was one of my hardest steps too. Yeah. And I didn't even realize that I needed to be vulnerable mm-hmm. um, or share things. <laughs> I really, I had this idea that really you were supposed to keep it all to yourself. Yeah. Um, but it's so helpful to me when pastors themselves are like, no, we, we struggle too. Cause there's mm-hmm. this <laughs> weird idea and I don't know who gave it to us but that like people are perfect and nobody is yeah everybody struggles yes um so I love that and I love that you are working on community yeah and then community can direct you back to Jesus yeah again yeah um so I wrote in my notes, God's mm-hmm. will of our emotions is to bring us back to him yes is that True. Do you agree with that? I do. <laughs> the, and that's, it's funny because I'm like, I wonder if Jenny Allen read this Elisa Does he Keaton's say that book too? or oh, vice sure. versa. So Elisa Keaton has a quote in her book, God gave you feelings to help you know where you are at all times in relationship to his presence and peace. Yes. Um, Which, Chip Dodd talks about that too. So this mm-hmm. is just maybe a widely known thing yeah. among people that discuss emotions. But in the voice of the heart, he says that too. It's like, yeah. how far are you from God? And um, basically every emotion is a signal yeah. of something that we need to bring to God or point back to God. Yeah. So like here it says, joy incites gratitude and worship. Anger can be a tool against injustices. Regret is our reminder of our need for God's forgiveness. Uh, Sadness makes us draw near to God for comfort. Fear can provide protection to help us discern right paths. Mm -hmm. Um, It says even hate and jealousy, which we see in God's own display of emotions, can be good. So both of those people, Chip Dodd and Jenny Allen, both argue that there are no bad emotions. Yeah. Which I, in my humanness, disagree with because I don't like (laughs) I don't like anger or sadness or despair. Yeah. But I can see their point. Yeah. Like it like, does bring you back to God. It, yeah. If, you, if you'll let it. And yes. I agree. Like if you never felt sad, you wouldn't know the, the sweetness of the comfort of the Holy Spirit. You know, yeah. some of the times in my life when I've been the most brokenhearted, like, um, After a miscarriage, you know, I had two miscarriages and talk about two of the worst experiences of your entire life, but also the comfort of the Holy Spirit in those seasons Mm -hmm. and also him bringing people around me to comfort me too is just one of the sweetest things. So it's not that you're like, I wish I would have terrible things happen to me. Right. So I never choose it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I do think that it's, it is to bring you to God and Mm -hmm. there's different facets of who God is to you that you can learn in all of those moments, Mm -hmm. you know, even, even when you're struggling with, um, jealousy or anger or whatever it is, you know, it's like, 
bring this to the feet of Jesus and learn that his grace is sufficient for that too. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily mean that he's always going to just boop, lift those emotions off of you, but just his presence in, in that moment and his sweetness to walk you through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause he doesn't abandon you. He doesn't leave you to feel it alone. Yeah. He's not like, Oh, well you're angry again. I just yeah. can't with you mm-hmm. right now. It's like, <laughs> good, I'm glad you came to talk to me about it. Which, mm-hmm. if you think about it, I think a lot of us learned as kids, you know, um, just because we don't have perfect parents because nobody's perfect. So you come with your emotions and it's like, I don't know how to handle this. I don't have time for it right now, whatever. And we project that in- onto God, but that's mm-hmm. not how God does it. Right. You know, it's I wrote down another quote. It says, God is waiting for us to come to him with all of it. Even the ugly feelings you and I are tempted to judge. God is waiting to see if we'll let them draw us back to him. Oh, that you wrote that. That's okay. (laughs) Where's the one? (laughs) I'm like, I didn't write that. That's Jenny Allen. I haven't read that book. Though still. (laughs) It was a it was a very similar quote about where is it? I put too many quotes in here. Okay. Oh. Did you find it? If not, I have a thought while you look Okay, for say it. it. Say um, it. And I'm going to study these 8,000 notes that I made. <laughs> I love it. I loved reading through them. <laughs> um, but no, I totally agree with you. And um, a lot of us do project how our parents parented, which they learned from their parents and generations and generations of this. Um And there's definitely been generations that are much more hardcore or like Mm -hmm. don't feel. Mm -hmm. And then we get the brunt of that. Um, But God is a compassionate God who does feel and who does care about our feelings. He's he's like the father that he's just the most perfect father. The one that you can crawl into his lap no matter how you're feeling. And he has grace and love for you. Yeah. Yeah. This what I finally Did you find your quote. (laughs) Feeling your feelings and going to God is one way you take heart whenever you face trouble. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. And I was thinking about that. Like I feel angry when I think about injustice in the world, Mm -hmm. you know, human trafficking. Yeah. Um, persecution, whatever it is, that stirs something in me. Um anger, sadness, lots of things. Yeah. If you and, didn't feel that, would you, cause joy does like crazy hikes yeah. in to help with these causes. Yes. If you didn't feel that anger towards those injustices, yes. you really would not have a reason to do that. Yeah. And if I didn't allow myself to feel the feelings about it and then take them to God and say, okay, this is, this is overwhelming to me. Like the world is so troubling. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like in this world, you will have tribulation. Yeah, I get it. Like I've experienced that and I see other people experiencing and I don't like it. So take heart, like feel your feelings about it and, and come to God and remember that he has overcome. And then God, what can I do? Is there anything I can do with these feelings? Mm -hmm. And Instead of, because I think otherwise we get overwhelmed and it's like, well, I can't fix it all. So I just, I won't do anything. Shut down. And, yeah. And that's not his will either. Right. That's, that's what keeps things from getting better. Mm-hmm. We all just are like, oh, I'm just going to pretend that's not happening and I'm not going to feel my feelings about it. Yeah. That's not healthy. No. Yeah. And then he also gives each of us gifts and callings to help these things and uh, yeah. bring glory to his name. So we have to feel. Yeah. So that we can bring it to him and he can lead us. Yeah. All right. On that note, I have, do you have any more thoughts that you want to share? Or? Um, I just, all I was thinking about was that we just talked a lot about negative. Like, yeah. Yeah. What, Let's talk about I know, the There's feelings. no bad feelings, right? <laughs> I do agree with that. There's no such thing as a bad feeling. Yeah. But um, I was thinking last night when I was thinking about this, you know, we often, I often, I shouldn't say we, I often want. God to take away all my, all my bad circumstances, all the things in my life that are upsetting me, stressing me, blah, blah, blah. So I can have joy. So I can have Mm -hmm. peace. Mm -hmm. And, and that obviously we all know if we've been alive for five minutes, just isn't how he works. He wants us to meet with him in that distress 
and and find joy and peace in him Mm -hmm. no matter what the circumstances no matter what having both and yes yes and that i think that that's probably one of the biggest growth edges for me right now in my life just because i'm like okay parenting teenagers is hard um I'm 45 years old. This is a weird age <laughs> to be going through who you feel like your whole identity is shifting from your younger years to like, oh my word, I'm on the downhill slide, you know, <laughs> yeah. just so many things. And it's like, um, and even things that just aren't about me, like all the crazy mm-hmm. things going in the world. And it's like, wow, God, like I, I can't have joy apart from you. In all of this, yeah. I can't have peace. Like I have to stay closely connected to you. And I do think that that's, you know, my barometer. If I'm feeling really anxious, sad, angry, all those things, that is my barometer for like, well, how far have you drifted? Mm-hmm. Like, are you, are you spending time with Jesus? Are you in the word? Are you spending time in community, being vulnerable, letting other people speak into your life? That's kind of your way of knowing like, okay, I need to get back into his presence, you know, Mm -hmm. where I can get that joy and that peace that surpasses understanding. Yeah. So. And it doesn't mean you don't also feel bad, but or like the, I I still refer to them as negative emotions, Yeah, but like, yeah, it doesn't mean that you don't feel sad. True. And joy. Yeah. Um, at the same time. And yeah. I, I experienced that actually after miscarriages too. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's strange and it can only come from him. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. I this appreciate what you had to say and, oh, um, thanks. I appreciate friendship. your questions <laughs> and how you look. I'm like, you talk too much, Joy Fox. No, you don't. That's why I, I wanted I wanted to hear from you. That's why you're here Aww. and you share such great wisdom. So thank you. That gets the glory. Yes. Thank you. Mm-hmm.